Good morning, everyone. I'm Austin. And I'm Shelby. And we want to go ahead and welcome you guys to our first ever church at home service. Woo-hoo! Right, Shelby? Yeah. So we want to engage with you all through the entire service. So that starts off in the comment section. Yeah, actually, in the comment section, don't forget to put the praise hand emoji during praise and worship. Yep. Or when Pastor D says a really good point, a smile emoji if you're really, really happy, a crying emoji if you're crying during worship. Or also, like the blowing your head emoji. Oh. Whatever, Pastor D says a really good point right. in this sermon. Right. Don't right. forget, guys. And also, We'll be in the comment section too, yeah. so we'll be looking out for you guys. Absolutely. So to get things started off, go ahead and comment and let us know where you're watching from. And then we'll see you all again in a few minutes. Crossroads, I want to be the first to welcome you to our first ever church at home. Now, this is a pretty unique experience because we get to enjoy church in our living room. Our prayer is that you're able to relax and worship God together with your friends and family. So in the usual fashion, we'll sing our worship songs, you'll have a time and opportunity to give in the middle, and then you'll also have your message by Pastor D, which is both strengthening and encouraging. So everybody go ahead and grab their coffee, Get everybody around the screen and welcome to church at home. When I think about your goodness, my heart is overcome. How can I begin to think? Everything changes. 
soul. You are my breakthrough. I praise you. I praise you. Let's go. All right, guys, so we do have a few brief announcements for you guys, two in particular. Yeah. The very first one is that we are planning to have small groups this week, and we want you all to stay tuned to our social media pages because there you'll find more announcements about those. But what I can go ahead and tell you is that we're planning to have them, but they will be online. Yes, and also your second announcement is April 12th, Up. next month, is our Easter service Sunday. It's that time, that's right. So don't forget to invite your friends, your families, the cousins, the aunties, Everybody, we want to pack Everybody. the pine again. So if y'all remember from January how we packed the pine, yep. we're going to do it again in April. Mm -hmm. This time it's going to be sunny outside. We're going to take a few pictures and we'll have more details to give you guys soon. Absolutely. So with that being said, that concludes our announcements for this week.
Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Crossroads Church at Home. And uh, this is our first edition. Let's bow our head and pray. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here. We thank you for the great praise and worship that we just experienced uh, with our praise team. We thank you for this moment that you have allowed to happen in our lives and during our time here on this earth. And we thank you most of all for your son, Jesus Christ, that lives inside of us. We thank you for a victorious living, that we walk by faith, not by sight, that we walk, Lord, in the, in the, in the power of your spirit. Uh, we walk with a sound mind. We will not be afraid, but we trust in you with all of our heart. And so anything that's evil that tries to come against us, we just take authority over it in Jesus' name. And we take authority over this, this uh, virus, uh, this coronavirus that's, that's attempting to um, take the lives of people and disrupt our lives. We just get, Lord, we've already prayed, so we thank you and we just believe it's already done. It's settled. We're just looking for the victorious report to say it's already over. And so we just thank you. And by faith in Jesus' name, we give you praise. Amen. Amen. All right, so listen, uh, we're going we're gonna to do a, a quick mini lesson, and the name of it is called Catch Your Breath, Don't Choke. Can you say that? Catch Your Breath. Catch Your Breath. Don't Choke. Don't Choke. See, when I was a kid, um, I had this incident that happened to me. I, was, I think I was in the second grade, and um, uh, I was eating lunch and clowning at the same time, and I got some food lodged in my throat. So I, I jumped up, I put my hands around my throat, and I was choking, and everybody around me was laughing, all the kids around me were laughing because they just thought I was clowning. But I was actually really choking. Food was really lodged in my throat. My teacher, I remember my teacher screaming, sit down, sit down. And, and as I had my hands on my throat, the food dislodged from my mouth and, you know, I was able to, to breathe. But I, I remember sitting down and not eating the rest of my lunch and crying because that moment affected me so much. You know, I was so afraid. And but the crazy part about it is that moment affected me all throughout my life. I remember my mom trying to give me some medicine 
uh, you know, give me some pills to take because I wasn't feeling well. And she gave me these big pills and I put them in my mouth and I was sitting there with the water in my hand. She said, did you, did you swallow those pills? And I said, no, ma'am. And she said, boy, swallow the pills. And I, I wouldn't swallow the pills. Why? Because I was afraid I was going to, I was going to choke. Mm -hmm. Right. And so even throughout my, my adult life, that moment, that moment of choking, it followed me. My wife teased me now because when I get pills and stuff, I look at her and say, man, I'm some big pills. Why? Because that moment, it still affected me. That, that choking moment, it still, it still affected me. And so listen, I, I, what I believe, man, is I believe that God allows certain things to happen in our lives. Uh, certain, um, he allows certain challenges to come in our lives so that, you know, it tests what we believe about God. Are we going to choke or are we going to believe by faith that God has already given us victory? Right. So things come. He allows them to come. And just like my moment of my taking those pills, what are we going to do? Are we going to walk by faith? Or are we going to be afraid? Just like the world is afraid. Right. Uh, just like people, you know, all over is afraid. I was in line at somewhere. I don't remember where I was at. And this lady went in talking about the coronavirus and all the things. And she was so afraid. OK, it's normal. The name of this lesson is catch your breath, but don't don't choke. So all of us have kind of got the wind knocked out of us because it's knocked us out of our routine, right? So she's out of her routine and she's like, oh, what am I going to do? And I get sick all the time. And every time something comes up, I get the pneumonia and all these things. And then she asked me, she said, so, so are you afraid? I said, no, ma'am, I'm not afraid. She said, well, you're not afraid? I said, no, I'm, 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 I'm a Christian. I believe in the scriptures. I'm not, I'm not afraid. And she said, well, I'm a Christian too. I'm a Christian. I said, well, then breathe, breathe, just breathe. Just breathe, catch your breath, catch your breath, get back on in faith, and let's believe God. So we don't have, we don't have to choke. But what we have to understand, man, is that not choking means that I don't let these testing moments be bigger than my faith in God. Mm. Right? So not, not choking means I don't allow these moments to be bigger than my faith in God. My faith in God must triumph everything that I face. Okay, all right. Otherwise, listen, otherwise, again, like, as I said, we all get the air knocked out of us. Things happen. We don't expect them to happen. We get, we get the air. We got to catch our breath. You know what I mean? But then the issue is, are you going to choke? But see, the scripture, the scriptures are full of people that got the air knocked out of them, got things that happened to them, the face of tragedies, face plagues. They got the air knocked out of them. But listen, they did not choke. And my favorite, my favorite person to talk about is David. Because God, listen, man, God put David in moments where the average person, the average person going to choke. Mm -hmm. The average person, after that air getting knocked out of him, they ain't going to get back up. But David was a guy uh, that God taught from a, from a young age how to have faith and trust in him. That no matter what come, what came David's way, David always believed in God first. Right. So so just like God taught David, David going to teach us today. Is that all right? That's right. All right. So 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 let's look. So let's let's look at it. what would David teach us? What is what is he going? He's going he's going to teach us how not to panic. First of all. <laughs> right. Don't, don't panic, man. Just relax. Chill. Just just chill. God got you. But what he, but what he does, I think what God taught him was how to create a culture of faith, a culture of faith in God. That's what he does. God, David, David's going he's going to teach us how to create this this culture of faith. Right. Y'all know the story. I'm just let me let me tell you the story because I don't, I don't have the kind of time I have on Sunday morning usually. All right. So we got an abbreviated time. So let me let me just tell you the story. David was a young he was a young king. God anointed him as king when he was about 16. Some theologians believe 15, 16 years old. And so his father sends him to the to the battle. It was a battle between the Philistines and the Israelites. And his father sent him to the battle. When David get to the battle, he he hears this large, uh, huge man. Um, Basically cursing Israel out, uh, being very braggadocious, daring them to, to come forth and fight. And everybody in the camp was scared. And David walked in and he heard Goliath talking. Right. Mm -hmm. And the scripture says David, David started asking the questions. Hey, who is this man? Who is this man? See, listen, in, in, in order to create this culture uh, uh, of faith in God, you have to understand that God prepares us for moments like this. We're prepared for these moments. We're prepared for when, when tragedy strikes. We're prepared. We Y'all, listen, we go to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. 
We read a Bible plan. We're in our small groups, all those things. So we should be prepared for these type of moments. David was prepared. Let's, 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 let's turn to the scripture. First, first Samuel 17, chapter 26, verse is where we're going to start. Now, if you're at home and you're watching, you can, you can turn uh, and open your Bibles or you just can listen. All right. So let, let, me, let, me just show you, let me just show you what David did when he showed up. The scripture says, David asked the soldier standing nearby, what will a man get for killing this Philistines and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway, that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? And these men gave David the same reply. They said, yes, this is the reward for killing him. Right. So David was so bold. He walked in the camp saying, hey, man, who is this? Who is this man that's talking against the armies of the Lord? No one in the whole camp was that bold. And see, as Christians, we should be that bold. If we're going to have a culture of faith, we should be that bold in our relationship with God that we say, hey, man, no matter what come, God got us. Mm-hmm. And see, what David was speaking from a place of trust. Right. He was speaking from a place of, you know what? We've seen this before. Mm-hmm. And that's what we'll learn later. We're going to read his resume. But we're going to learn. He said, I've seen this before and God got me through it. God going to get me through this again. Yeah. And so what we should be saying now, hey, we've seen this before. We see it in the scriptures. Yeah. We saw plagues and things that happened in the scripture. Yeah. So we've seen it before. So we should have faith enough to say, okay, all right, I ain't going to panic. I might got the air knocked out of me, but I ain't going to panic. I ain't choking. Oh, man. No, listen, because what what David was so bold, the things he was saying, it it got all the way up to the king. Because no one else in the whole camp was talking. Why? Because David, God had, had, had helped David create a culture of faith in him. That he believed whatever came his way. God was going to help him overcome it or get through it. And that's what happened in David's life. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to look at three, just three quick points of how we, how do we develop this culture of faith? So when things come our way, how do we respond to it? All right. First, first of all, number one, we must be saying the same thing that God says. Okay. So this is where, this is where we lose most Christians right here. This is where most Christians take a pass where most Christians put their finger up and walk out the door. Right, because because this is one of the things that you have to change what you're doing. You have to change what you're saying in order to develop this culture of faith that we're talking about. You have it starts with what you what you're saying. Oh well, praise the Lord. No, really, because you, you, you can't you can't be negative, you can't be full of doubt, you can't be saying something contrary to what God's word says and expect your faith in God to work. Oh boy, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get some emails on that in mind. No, man, because listen, when David was when David got to the camp, he he kept referring back to his covenant with God. He kept referring back. He said, "Listen, who's he's defying the armies of the living God? Who is this pagan? What is he saying?" He said, "Who is this man that does not have a covenant with God?" He's repeating what the, what God has said to them. Psalms ninety one. He said he said some might come to my left and my right, but they won't come near me. Right. That's what David believed. That's what David was saying. Now, let me let me let me read the scriptures. It's uh, first Samuel 17, 32. It says, don't worry about this Philistine. David told Saul. Now, this is the point where he's in. He's actually talking to the king. He actually has an audience with the king. All right. So he tells that he tells the king, he said, don't be don't 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 worry about this. I'll go fight him. He's listening to what the king says. Don't be ridiculous. Saul said, there's no way. You can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy and he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. Y'all hear that? Mm-hmm. I've been, I, I have been taking care of my father's goats. And he said, when a lion or a bear comes to steal the lamb from the flock, I go after it with my club and I rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and I club it to death. I've done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it. I'll do it again to this Philist, this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. And the Lord, listen to this: the Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will also rescue me from this Philistine. You see how convincing he was? Listen, you're not convincing if you're not repeating what some what God is saying. No one is convincing. If you're not repeating what God has already said, you have to be repeating victorious words. You have to be saying positive things in order to be that convincing. And so we, we as Christians, we have to be so convinced that, hey, God's going to get us through this until, the, until that's all we, we're saying. Because it doesn't help us speak in negative. It doesn't help us worry. Worry don't help. It gives you the illusion that it's help, but it doesn't help. Right? I had this guy, I was in line, and uh, and I was talking to, just talking to this guy, man, and he, he went in to... Where did the virus come from? Where do you think the virus come from? 
I said, well, they say it came from China. He said, well, you know what? I think it came from Russia. Yeah, that was my thoughts exactly. I was like, what? Yeah, I think Russia put something in the water. I said, well, you know it's all over the world. It just ain't the United States. Yeah, I know. They polluted the whole world's pollute, polluted all the world's water. I said, listen, you can believe what you want to believe. Here's what I believe. I believe God going to get us through it. Yeah. I said, I believe God going to work it all out for us. Uh, uh, he, yeah. he said, oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. See, again, people, people, people get, get the breath knocked out of them. Yeah. We just got to make sure they don't choke. Right. All right. Y'all still with me? Yes. All right. So, so, so our second point is this. Listen, our second point is first, first, you got to watch what you're saying. You got to be saying the same thing God says. And then second, you got to guard your ears. Can somebody say guard your ears? Guard your ears. Yep, man. You can't, you can't listen to the news all day. You just can't listen all day. You, at some point, you got to turn CNN off. At some point, I mean, come on now, because man, it, it, you just get so many different reports. You know, it lands on your skin. It'll stay there for 25 hours. It uh, gets on your clothes. It's there for eight hours. Or no, it dies after 10 seconds. We don't know. And at some point, it's like, okay, we know it's here. That's all we know. <laughs> we know it's very contagious. That's all we know. But at some point, man, you got to, in order to have the culture of faith that I believe David had, you have to watch what you hear. You have to guard your ears. You can't just listen all day to news. Yeah. Oh, well. I'll praise the Lord. Amen. Now, when's the last time you turned on the word and listened to the word? Because um, let, let me just tell you, what you hear, defect, it, it, I'm sorry, it affects uh, how long? For, it, it affects how you believe. It affects what you believe. And it affects how long you will believe. So you have to guard your ears. You have to. You just can't turn it on and leave it on all day. You just can't. At some point, you got to turn that thing off. Well, praise the Lord. David, let me give you David's example. In the scriptures, the Bible says when David showed up at the fight, uh, his oldest brother came at him. Said, Dave, what you doing here, man? I'm just going to, y'all can shoot, you can put it up there. But but listen, uh, I, I'm going to paraphrase it. He said, he said what, what you doing here, you little arrogant thing, you? Why are you here? Right. David, David, David said, man, chill, bro. Just chill. I'm good. He said, no, you just there. You just not here to show out. See, his brother knew that David was confident mm -hmm. that David walked like he walked like, yeah, man, I'm here. I'm bad. Right. Wow. We got to get this thing done. And see, as Christian, we should be saying, hey, we got this. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Hey, we will. No, listen, we should be saying we praying for our, 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 our politicians. We're praying for those that are in research. We're praying for those, those medical technicians that's out there that's making tests and out there trying to find a cure. We're praying for them. But on our part, we're casting the devil out. We're, we're, we're casting this thing out in Jesus name. We're, we're speaking to it. We're talking to it and say, no, you will not. You will not affect my house. You will not affect my community. You will not affect my state. We have to do those things. Right. Now, let me tell you, you'll never get to a point where you believe it. If you are listening to everything, you have to be listening to the word of God. You have to turn it on and let you home all day today. Listen to the word all day. And see, see, see what happens to you. You're not, you, we, we're not at the school today. So turn the word on and listen to the word. You have to make sure you guard your ears. Let me give you an example. When I was a kid, we couldn't bring everything into our house. My parents wouldn't let us. Like we hear things out in the street. We couldn't bring that home. We say some crazy stuff. I said one time, now this, uh, I hope I don't offend some of you old people. All right. Uh, older, mature like me. Uh, but I said, I said, I remember one time I said, son of a gun. And I got in trouble. My stepdad said to me, where you get that from? I said, them. <laughs> he said, you let them keep saying it. You don't say that. And I kept saying, man, that ain't nothing. What's wrong with that? You know, that's not a bad word. But it was too close to something else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he said, he said, you let them say that. We don't say that type stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And see, that's, that should be our whole mindset as Christians. That we, let the, we let other people doubt. We're not going to doubt. Right. We let other people worry. We're not worrying. Right. We let other people fret. We're not fret. Now, we don't hate on them and then like that, but we're going to let them do that. But we're gonna, what we're going to do, we're going to watch what we say. We're going to guard our ears. Yeah. All right? All right, come on. We got one more point. We're done. All right, listen. So, uh, we're going to practice gratefulness. I'm going to say practice gratefulness. Again, again, now, listen. We're talking about building this culture of faith. We have to practice Faithfulness. That's being thankful every day. Every day we want to be thankful. Every day we got to practice gratefulness. Listen to this. The Spirit of God said this to me uh, this week. He said, without gratefulness you will forget the goodness of God. Without being grateful you will forget how good God is. Yeah. Because what fear and desire is fear and desire is to keep us worried, full of anxiety, full of depression, you know, 
all those things that come along, those emotional things. It's designed to, to make us do all those things. But, but, but being grateful to God on a daily basis, it keeps you focused. It keeps you uh, in a place where you're not questioning God, but you're just saying, God, I believe. I trust you. I, with all my heart, I trust you. You're going to guide our steps. You're going to guide our leaders. You're going to guide our, our, our medical researchers. Why? Because we trust you. See, that's, that's when you practice faithfulness. It's, it, it sobers your mind. So you focus in on God. All right. And listen, that's easy to do, man. That's easy to do. All you have to do when you start getting up in the morning is start finding things to be grateful for. So during this time where we're fighting against this, this, this evil, let's, let's, let's be grateful. Yeah. Let's start being grateful. Well, it's going it's to turn your faith on. Right. It'll turn your expectations on. Mm -hmm. it, it, it will. It'll turn your... David said, the same God that helped me got to beat that lion and kill that bear, the same God, he's going to help me kill this. And see, we should be saying, the same God that helped me get through unemployment, the same God that helped me get up when I was sick, the same God, he's going to help us get through this. You see what I mean? That's what gratefulness does. Right. So so let me read this last. Week. I want to read this because it's so good that I got a story to tell you and then I'll be almost done. Listen, the, the 56 chapter uh, 56 verse of, of uh, chapter 17. It says, as soon as David returned from killing Goliath, listen to this. Abner brought him to Saul with the Philistines head still in his hand. Tell me about your father, young man. Saul said, listen. And David replies, his name is Jesse and we live in Bethlehem. So. The little boy from Bethlehem saved Israel that day from the giant. And I'm here to tell you, the little, the, the king from Bethlehem, the one who's Lord of Lord and King of King, that king from Bethlehem, he's going to save us from this mess we're in today. He's going to help us. He's going to help us uh, uh, walk through this mess like it was nothing. We just got to keep believing. Let me tell you this story. Let me tell you the story uh, about gratefulness. Y'all know my dog, my dog died this year, Dakota. On January 21st, I think we had her about 10 to 12 years. She died. But when we came, to San Antonio, when we came here to, from San Antonio to Atlanta, Dakota would go in the backyard, man. And, you know, we, and here we got, we got Animal Kingdom. You know what I mean? We got birds and we got woodpeckers. We do. Man, I ain't never seen a woodpecker until I got here. We got woodpeckers and they, you know, we got owls. We got everything. And they just all over the place, right? And, and uh, rabbits. And so Dakota, when we get here, man, Dakota, she gets in the backyard and she, she let everybody know. Hey, this is my territory. All of this right here. Don't you come in? So we would go in the back. We found dead birds. You know, we, we, find, we find, you know, rabbits in holes scared to come out. Because why? Because Dakota let them know, hey, this is my territory. And y'all have, y'all, y'all got to, y'all got to get out. So for, for those 10 years or nine years that Dakota was with us, she ruled the yard. I mean, birds would not, birds would not, you know, they, they try to build little nests in, inside our bushes and stuff. And, and Dakota wouldn't let them. So on January 21st, Dakota died. And the other day I went outside in the backyard. I see birds. They walk around bold. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we back, dog. You know what I'm saying? I see, I see squirrels running all over the place. And listen, why is that the case? Because Dakota is gone. She know, we, I no longer have someone that rules the yard. And see, let me tell you, your life is your yard. And your faith will rule your yard. Your faith will keep all the negative out. Your faith will keep all the sickness out. Your faith will keep all the evil out. If it comes in, your faith will get it out. If it hits you, your faith will get it out. But we just got to continue to believe. Yeah. Right? Did y'all receive anything from that today? Amen. Bow your heads. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. We thank you that we've had this time at church at home together through Crossroads Church. We thank you again for the victory that we have over this <clears throat> this virus that, that's that's going on in our in our world and we just we just believe it's already done we thank you for it in advance and we're gonna well, lord we're gonna practice we're gonna practice saying what you say we're gonna watch and guard our ears and then lord most of all we're gonna practice gratefulness we're gonna be grateful every day of the goodness that you that you provide to our lives that sometimes we overlook but we thank you today and we give you praise and we give you honor in jesus name amen, amen. well listen so i thank you for listening to our sermon this morning and, and experiencing our first edition of Church at Home via Crossroads Community Church. Now, I'm going to send you back to Austin and Shelby, and they're going to give you some more information about how do we worship God in our giving. We're still doing heart for the house. We're still in a, in a moment of sacrificing, helping our church um, accomplish some things that we need to accomplish. So listen to them, and they're going to teach you how to, uh, they're going to tell you what you need to do to give to our church today. We love you. God bless you. We're praying for you. Keep the faith.
Now we come to a special moment in our service where we're able to honor God with our giving. Here at Crossroads, we believe in the power of the tithe and we want to give God what he truly deserves back. So with Crossroads, we have two distinct methods for giving. The very first method is via Cash App. If you open up your Cash App and search dollar sign Crossroads ATL, again, that's dollar sign Crossroads ATL, you'll be able to go ahead and input your desired amount and go ahead and give as you please. The second method for giving at Crossroads is we encourage you to visit www.crossroadsatl.com. Once you click on the give link, you'll be able to go ahead and again and put your desired amount for giving and you'll be good to go. Also, we want to give a friendly reminder for you all that we are in the season for Heart for the House. That's our giving campaign to really help grow our abundant resources at Crossroads via the $350 giving amount. You can go ahead and visit CrossroadsATL.com and use the give option there, or you can go ahead and give via the cash app at dollar sign Crossroads ATL. All of the information for both of those giving resources are listed below. And again, as always, we thank you for your generosity towards Crossroads. Now, Shelby, how was that? That was awesome. On behalf of our crew at Crossroads Church, we're thankful that you all decided to hang out with us on this special Sunday of Church at Home. Yes, and guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video, also tag your friends, and share this video with them throughout the week and invite them to come to this video. Absolutely. And last but certainly not least, make sure you take a picture of you and your family watching today's Church at Home service. With that being said, stay tuned to our social media pages for more announcements, and we'll see you guys next week.